Okay, welcome. Today I finally learned a new tutorial where I am able to video my face and also show the PowerPoint slides at the same time. So let's hope uh, this works. So today's lesson, uh, we are still under the topic of inheritance. And today, uh, video 2, inheritance, we are covering two main concepts. Uh, the main concepts that we will be covering is actually the concept of uh, co-dominant alleles and also the second concept that we will cover today is the concept of multiple alleles. The two case studies that I will be covering today uh, will be using blood type to teach what is co-dominance and the uh, multiple alleles and for the case in plants I will be using the camellia flower petals to teach the concept of co-dominance. Okay. Mm, normally when people talk about blood type there are many uh, unscientific uh, things with regards to blood type, for example, you can see that uh, some people follow the different blood type diet. In this case, there is like a fun uh, quiz where if you look at it, there it says find out what your blood type reveals about your personality. So if you know what your blood type is, okay, you can take this fun quiz which is not scientific. Uh, within my slides, I did have the zoomed in version just to show you to satisfy your curiosity. So the heading says non-scientific fun. Okay, blood type A, introverted, shy to show their emotions, perfectionist, loyal. These are the positive traits. So negative traits are obsessive, stubborn. And blood type A. Okay, uh, if you are blood type B, independent, individualistic, creative, animal lovers, optimistic, worst trait, self-centered, forgetful. Hmm. Blood type AB, the rarest blood type, very smart, even geniuses. So you check right now whether your class geniuses are blood type AB. Some of their worst traits are being aloof, critical, indecisive, two-faced and difficult to trust. And blood type O, confident, friendly, ambitious people, unafraid to take risks, passionate, arrogant, insensitive, vain, and always stand out from the crowd. Okay, does it apply to you and your blood type? Maybe, maybe not. Well, it is uh, unscientific. But today, I'm going to tell you scientific facts about your human blood type. And actually, based on the quiz already, uh, you should realize that actually in humans, we can actually have uh, four different blood types. So blood type AB, blood type O, blood type A, and blood type B. But what exactly does it mean uh, in the scientific sense when we have actually different blood types? So this one has everything to do with our red blood cells. So if you look closely at the red blood cells, Okay, and we classify our red blood cells into four different blood types. Notice on the surface of blood type O, okay, it's actually uh, in a way uh, quite naked. But when you look at blood type B, there is a little chemical present called a B antigen. Blood type A, you see on the surface of the red blood cell, there are little chemical signals called A antigen. And for blood type AB, there are chemical signals and you see that there's the blue B antigen and then there is the yellow A antigen. Okay, so when we talk about uh, different blood types, actually what we are referring to is that specific chemical known as the an antigen and the type of antigen that's found on the red blood cell surface. So uh, when we have gene for blood type, 
that's just the unit of inheritance. Whenever we talk about genes, the alternate forms of genes are also known as alleles. In the case of human blood type, um, we have three different alleles. So previously when we were doing our genetic diagram drawing, normally we only had uh, two alleles, one dominant, one recessive, where we represented it by a capital and then small letter. But for the case of blood type, because there are three different alleles, uh, there is a more scientific way to write down the blood typing alleles. And this is quite universal. So if you take a look, uh, the three alleles are written as I, then superscript A. Allele, single letter. Okay, then the second allele, I, superscript B, and then I, superscript O. So this is the universal way to write the alleles. If you have written the blood type alleles as A, B, and O, this will be rejected at your exams, it will be rejected in your written work also. Okay, so just take note that there are three different alleles. Okay, so as I was uh, saying previously, so when you have uh, three different alleles and you compare them to basically the concept of red blood cells, ultimately when a person is said to have a blood type A, on the surface of the red blood cell in blood type A, there's the presence of a chemical antigen called A antigen. So you see the blue color A antigen found on blood type A. Then when you have a person that is blood type B, you can see that on the surface of the red blood cell in blood type B, there is the presence of your B antigens, which are the yellow color bits there in the image and blood type AB okay there is no such thing as an AB antigen instead when a person has a blood type AB the red blood cell has a mixture of both A antigens and B antigens found on the surface of the red blood cell blood type O in the past I think the O was meant to represent zero but in blood type O you will notice that there is uh, no antigen in the sense that there's the absence of A and B antigens. So this is how you come up with your uh, four different blood types, okay? And the link to the antigens present on the surface of the red blood cell. Right now, um, if you are already very clear on how inheritance of blood type comes about, actually you can use this time, uh, you can use your iPad, you can scan this QR code, which brings you to a link to an online textbook where it goes into great detail about uh, blood group antigens, not just the ABO blood typing. Sometimes if you notice our blood type, there is a plus and minus, that's the recess uh, antigen. So it also gives you more background information on that. So this one is uh, additional, additional knowledge. If you are interested, check it out. Okay, if not, I will carry on with uh, what you need to know in your syllabus. Okay, can scan the link already? Later, I will, I will show you my cat. Okay, so uh, when we talk about inheritance of blood typing, again, we need to be very clear of uh, what is meant by genotype, what is meant by phenotype. Um, today's materials, you can check your classwork that I did give to you previously. I think uh, one of the pages, we have a timetable where I ask you to fill up the genotype and phenotypes for blood types. So in humans, phenotype, when you say a person has a certain blood group, that's what we refer to as a phenotype. So a person with blood group O, A, B, A, B, these are all phenotypes. However, when we talk about genotypes, uh, this one we are actually referring to the combination of two alleles that will result in the subsequent phenotype. Okay, so we'll go back again. So previously, I already said uh, there are three different alleles that are uh, present okay, for blood, uh, blood type, IA, IB, and IO. 
I will give you some time to think about it. Among the three alleles, one of the three alleles, actually uh, allele IO, is considered the recessive allele. So what does it mean to be a recessive allele? When does the trait, a recessive trait, can be expressed in the phenotype? Under what kind of genotype? Okay, so IO. What genotype will give you a blood type O? Additionally, the other two alleles, IA, IB, these two alleles are dominant over IO allele. Okay, so if IA is present and then the second allele is IO, the blood type or the phenotype expressed will be blood type A. Uh, however, uh, this is where I bring in the new term, co-dominant. Actually, IA and IB are considered co-dominant. So what does it mean by co-dominant? Both traits will be equally expressed or equally contributed to the phenotype. Okay, so have you figured it out? What are the potential genotypes for each of the blood group? I will give you a hint. Uh, blood group A and B, there are two different genotypes that can result in blood group A and B. So, as stated previously, allele IO is considered recessive. So, in order for a person to have an O blood group, basically the person must be homozygous, recessive, or homozygous for the IO, IO genotype. Okay, uh, if a person has blood group A, there are two options. Because allele IO is considered recessive, there are two potential genotypes. Either the person is homozygous, Okay, for IAIA or heterozygous IAIO. So under the heterozygous condition IAIO, because the person uh, IO is considered recessive, the person will still have a blood group A. Uh, similarly for blood group B, in order to have a phenotype of blood group B, the person can have the genotype IBIB or even IBIO because IO is the recessive allele. Now, for a person displaying AB blood group phenotype, what this means is that the genotype is IA and IB. So, the presence of the IA and IB uh, allele will result in both A antigens and B antigens to be actually present on the surface of the red blood cell. So, both A antigens and B antigens are actually expressed. So, in a sense, IA and IB is considered uh, co-dominant alleles and they both can contribute to the phenotype. Okay, IO doesn't really cope for any antigen. So even with the presence of IO, uh, there will be there's no such thing as a O antigen. So you don't see O, you just see no antigen on the surface of the red blood cell. Okay, so this is the take-home message when you are studying the blood typing. Ultimately, co-dominance is a new term. Previously, we talked about complete dominance where we have the capital letter that represents complete dominance over the recessive allele. But in reality, there are certain alleles that are uh, described as co-dominant where both contribute equally to the phenotype. So, case study, ABO blood typing system, ultimately, allele IO is recessive to IA and IB. But IA and IB are co-dominant. Okay, so when IA and IB are paired together in the genotype, this will result in blood type AB. So both A antigens and B antigens are found on the surface of the red blood cell. Uh, the ABO blood uh, grouping also actually introduces the concept of uh, multiple alleles. So previously when we were drawing uh, genetic diagrams, we always talk about only two alleles, one dominant, one recessive, so two alleles. But uh, in the case of multiple alleles, the idea is that there will be three or more alleles present than alternate forms of a gene. So in this case, when we talk about blood group alleles, we have IA, IO and IB, that's three alleles. So this will be uh, termed under multiple alleles. Okay, so again to summarize, okay, so when you have your phenotype, which are your four different blood groups, the genotype, okay, uh, 
IO is recessive. Okay, so then uh, to have O blood type, both uh, alleles in the genotype will be IO. IO is recessive to IA and IB, so therefore in uh, blood group A and B, even the heterozygous condition IA, IO and IB and IO can uh, give rise to blood type A and B respectively. Uh, lastly, because IA and IB are co-dominant, they both equally contribute to the phenotype. So blood group AB basically means that the genotype consists of uh, one IA and one IB allele. Okay, so the next few slides are just uh, fun facts. Uh, not sure how accurate it is. Generally, I was reading some other textbooks. They talk about the distribution of blood groups uh, around the world. Okay, and uh, it might come as a surprise or if you can survey your class right now, I would say that actually majority of the blood groups present in the human population is actually blood group O. We, yeah, so that means both your alleles are IO, IO. Okay, so uh, IA distribution, you can just take a look. Fun facts only. Okay, majority uh, blue color, you find them Southern Australia. Okay, minority like the white color, maybe South Africa. Eh, sorry, South America. Uh, low in numbers. IB allele distribution, mostly in Asia. Okay, IO. So then, uh, quite a large proportion actually. So if you look at the numbers, 90 to 100%. So majority uh, have an IO allele. Alright, so this one is just fun fact. Don't memorize it. According to a particular article I read a few years ago. So uh, IO and probably blood group O is actually the most common blood type. Okay. The second case study that we are going to cover uh, to teach you just the concept of uh, co-dominance is using this flower called the camellia flower. Okay, and we will be examining the petal color of the flower. So let me show you an example of the cross. So when you have a white camellia flower, so the petals are white, and it is crossed with a red camellia flower where the petals are red color. The resulting offspring, the flower petals, you notice, it's not all red, it's not all white. Instead, it's actually a mixture of uh, red and white patches on the flower petals. So when you see this, right, um, which is dominant? Is it the white allele that's dominant or is it the red allele that's dominant? So you notice there is both red and white that's being expressed in the phenotype. So actually this uh, gives us a hint that actually it's likely the red allele and the white allele that are considered co-dominant. Okay, so red and white alleles are co-dominant. Because they are co-dominant, uh, you have to you, you cannot stick to the capital letter and small letter assignment okay, for the alleles. Okay, so let me just read the question on the slide to you. So explain this observation. Flower petals contain patches of red and white color. So this means that both the red and white allele contribute to the phenotype. So they are co-dominant. So you cannot stick to capital and small letter. Instead, like blood typing, so for co-dominant alleles, it is recommended you choose like a base letter. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Ah, see. Okay. So in this case, I, I uh, arbitrarily chose the letter C okay, for color. And then because white and red are co-dominant, so I put C superscript W to represent the co-dominant white allele and then C superscript R to represent the co-dominant red allele. I, I use capital letter R and capital letter W for both cases, okay, co-dominant. So then when you write out the genotype, it should be quite clear. So whenever you have uh, flowers that are completely white, this means that uh, 
it is likely to be homozygous. So both alleles will be CW, CW, then you will have all white petals. So similarly, if you have the flower that is red in color, no white patches, this means that again, uh, the genotype, both alleles will be C capital letter R, C capital letter R. Then when you have the cross between a white and red flower and you have the offspring flower that is a mix of white and red patches on the petal, so red and white are co-dominant, then it's likely CRCW, okay, for the genotype. So uh, again, I repeat, uh, similar to blood typing, uh, because there is the idea of uh, co-dominance, normally there is a base letter and then we will put the superscript on top. Okay, for blood typing, IA, IO, and IB is fixed. You cannot change this uh, allele assignment. For the case of the camellia flowers, this C, W, C, R is assigned by me, but I suggest everybody just stick with this assignment. Okay, uh, when you write your key or if you ever do such questions with uh, related to these flowers. Okay, can. Now, um, uh, uh, a third, another concept that is not really in your syllabus, so besides complete dominance, uh, recessive alleles, co-dominant alleles, there is this concept of um, incomplete dominance. And if you find this concept a little bit confusing, okay, don't stress yourself out. It's not really a testable concept, but I thought it would be just interesting to introduce it to you, okay? Now, uh, in this case, uh, again, they show you a cross, but this cross is represented by a punnet square. So you have a red color homozygous flower. It was crossed with a white color flower. And if you look at their offspring, instead of red or white or even patches of red and white you have all the petal colors being pink in color okay so this is implying that the red allele is actually dominant but incompletely dominant over the white allele so that when the red and white actually cross and under the heterozygous condition the red Alu did not so-called manage to successfully um, completely make the flower petals red so you end up with a slight mix and pink petals normally we just describe this as incomplete dominance um, the punnet square itself they assign the red alu as capital letter R and then white as W but personally I would think it's better to assign the red alu in this case as capital R and a white as small letter R, incomplete dominance. So if given a choice, this would be how I will present the results instead. Okay, uh, pink flowers. Yeah, okay, so punnet square. Again, punnet square is not accepted when you answer structured questions. It's more for quick working when you are answering MCQ questions or just rough working before you commit to a full genetic diagram. Okay, so this is actually the last slide uh, for the concept for co-dominance, uh, multiple alleles. Uh, maybe at this point of time, you have certain questions, alright, but let me uh, clarify first. Okay, co-dominance is when both alleles are expressed in the heterozygous condition. So if it is for the case of the camellia flower where red and white are co-dominant, you will see flowers with petals that have a mixture of separately red and white okay so both are expressed but if it shows incomplete dominance this means that you end up with pink petals for maybe another flower species the idea is the red allele is not completely dominant and is not fully expressed under the heterozygous condition and if you spend a lot of time thinking, some of you will ask me, why red and white, if they both express themselves, why you don't end up with pink? Uh, this one is a little bit complicated uh, with the, in the explanation. 
let me get a drink first. Let you think about it. Monster. Okay. In the case of a uh, co-dominance, uh, a flower with both red and white petals, they express both red and white. What exactly is the mechanism behind this expression? Ultimately, during flower development, okay, there are two alleles, CR and CW. And as a flower develops, what happens is randomly, over time, as the flower develops, one of the two alleles, okay, either CR or CW, will undergo this process called inactivation. So it will inactivate itself. So among the two CR and CW, one of the two will randomly just inactivate. So you are only left with, in a way, one functioning allele. So for the flower petals that you see that are white color, what exactly is happening is actually the CR allele inactivating itself. So only CW, the white allele, expresses itself. So you get a patch of uh, white flowers. Uh, then alternatively, if you do see a patch of uh, red flowers on the petals, what exactly is happening? So Again, under the heterozygous condition, C, R, C, W. But when you see red petals, the C, W allele inactivates itself. So it chooses, uh, doesn't choose, it becomes uh, inactivated so it does not express itself. What is left is just the remaining C, R allele which will cause uh, those flower petals that are only expressing C, R with the C, W inactivated to express the red petals. So this is how you end up with a mix of red and white. And the patterning of the red and white uh, mixture on the petals is just random because ultimately the inactivation of the CR or CW allele is considered random. So it's really just a random patterning also of the flower color. However, when you compare it with the concept of incomplete con uh, dominance, this is when both the red allele and the white allele are actually expressed. There's no uh, concept or process of inactivation. In this case, when both the red and white allele are both expressed, and your red allele is not able to fully express itself under the heterozygous condition, this is what we call the red allele being incompletely dominant. So it's somewhat dominant but not fully because it doesn't express the full red color trait. Okay, so I hope uh, this clarifies things better. Um, there are some questions in your classwork, so I think I will give you some time. You look through them, try to answer these questions. Okay, then anything, please email me. Again, all my slides have my email, so you are... Yeah, I will be easily contactable. So to end off the lesson, you want to see the cat? Okay, so then I will say goodbye. My cat will say, oh, just got interrupted from his nap. But he'll say, hello, goodbye, have a nice day and be hardworking children. Hugs and kisses. Mwah.